10 years ago. Page six, this is New York Post, page six, New York Post. Look at the headline, No More Israel. Right. From September 2012, Henry Kissinger says in 10 years, when would that be? 2022. Right. There would be no more Israel. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? sure you guys hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so that you can always know when we have brand new content so you won't miss a thing random things you need to know i am your host um it is me benjamin netanyahu again for the third time yeah i, I need to come back and talk about this one we, we need to talk about it if you guys are in youtube watching thank you for coming back while we have the chance to bring in these episodes if you guys are at BitChute or you're at Rumble or Gab or Mines, thank you for coming back. Appreciate you. I'm just going to jump into this. Look, saw some of Lorenzo's episodes last week about what's going on. Especially saw this one about Hamas and what they're saying. And then I went to the, um, to the site that Lorenzo was on I saw this. The Israelis understand nothing but force. The security of their state depends on the aligning with Russia or at least being neutral. They will do this even if it means sacrificing the Ukrainian Jews. Even in the first Holocaust, there is a book written by a Jew which asks who killed the Jews. They were offered to take the Jews for $5 each. They took one look, saw most of them, they saw they were old and said we don't want them. Jews wrote this book and said we killed the Jews. That is what this means. Because we refuse to accept 100,000 to 200,000 Jews from Germany in exchange for a handful of dollars. They only wanted young people. They did not want the old. The Israelis have turned to the east. They now want Russia and China because America has forsaken them. America told them, in short, your Zionist project is a failure and you are bound to come to an end, if not this year, then the next. The Americans understand they are supporting a failed project, so the Israelis are looking for an alternative, which can be Russia or China, so they would not destroy their relations with China or Russia for a handful of Jews, as far as they're concerned, the Ukrainian Jews can go to hell. Even the Jews themselves, including Lieberman and Netanyahu, are now convinced that Palestine cannot be the state for the Jews. So they started saying that the holy Jerusalem is in Ukraine and not in Palestine. Ukraine is not the candidate to become the future Jewish state. Perhaps one of the reasons they instigated this war was to empty out Ukraine. The West is not convinced the Jewish state is doomed that the Zionist enterprise has failed. There's a solution then. Israel will be adopted by Russia and China instead of the of, by the West. Or that will be the alternative state. The whole world knows about the Jewish state in eastern Ukraine. I remember that there were 43,000 Jews, but now there are 200,000. It's an independent state. They did not want to spread the word about it, so they would not be told to go there rather than go to Palestine. Why did the Holocaust really happen? Leave aside everything that is being said. During World War II, some of the Jews joined the Americans and the West, and others joined Germany. They said, if the Germans win, we are with Germany. If the West wins, we are with the West. Hitler found out that there were Jewish spies, so he killed some of them. It was not hundreds of thousands like they say, they're all lies. They are now saying that the temple in the biblical Jerusalem are located in Ukraine and not in Palestine. If it does not work tomorrow, they might say that they are in the Netherlands. What? What? Now, I saw this and I said, what the hell is this guy talking about? What is he talking about? We're trying to make a place in the Ukraine. And then, you know, I did a little research and then I discovered this place called Uman. They put in beer. <laughs> Uman 
Ukraine. It's it's a it's a city. Um, it's a city in Ukraine. I don't know if you guys know about it. There's no fighting happening there. You hear about all the fighting in Ukraine, but you don't hear about any fighting in Uman. That's something to uh, to think about there. You might be saying, um, Benjamin Bibi, what is Uman? I'm, I'm going to tell you. Uman is a city in Cherkasy Oblast, central Ukraine. The population of Uman is currently 81,525 as of 2022. The city is also the pilgrimage site for Brezhlov Hasidic Jews. Look at that. So it's, it's a nice place. There's nothing Jew. I don't see anything particularly Jewish about it at all. I mean, you've got some people there, but no big deal, right? I mean, I don't. I mean, what's the big deal? Could it be this part here? A large Jewish community lived in Uman in the 18th and 19th centuries. During the Second World War in 1941, the Battle of Uman took place in the vicinity of the town where the German army encircled Soviet positions. The Germans deported the entire Jewish community, murdering about 17,000 Jews, and completely destroyed the Jewish cemetery burial place of the victims of the 1768 uprising, as well as Rebbe Nachman of Breslov. Since the 1990s, there has been a small but growing Jewish population in Uman. The local Jews are mostly involved in pilgrimage of Jewish tourists that arrived to the town. In 2018, the community saw large growth with about 10 to 20 families coming from Israel, accompanied by a small movement of young American couples. Newcomers to the city are concentrated around Shkitna Street, with some toward Nova Uman area. In conjunction with this growth in the community, a new school of Yiddish was established. Every Rosh Hashanah, there is a major pilgrimage by tens of thousands of Hasidim and others from around the world to the burial site of Rebbe Nachman of Breslov. Um, Rebbe Nachman me Uman spent the last five months of his life in Uman and specifically requested to be buried there, as believed by the Breslov Hasidim. Before his death, he solemnly promised to intercede on, ha on behalf of anyone who would come to pray on his grave on Rosh Hashanah. Be he the worst of sinners, thus a pilgrimage to the grave provides the best chance of getting unscathed through the stern judgment which, according to Jewish faith, God passes everybody on Yom Kippur. The Rosh Hashanah pilgrimage dates back to 1811 when the Rebbe's foremost disciple, Nathan of Breslov, organized the first such pilgrimage on the Rosh Hashanah after the Rebbe's death. The annual pilgrimage attracted hundreds of Hasidic Jews from Ukraine, Belarus, Lithuania, and Poland throughout the 19th and 20th centuries until the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917. The event brings together a wide variety of Orthodox society with Yemenite yeshiva students to former Israeli prison inmates and American hippies. In 2022, the following, following the Russian invasion in Ukraine, a number of pilgrims coming to Uman for Jewish New Year was approximately 10,000. Could this be the place that our Muslim brother was just speaking of? Could this be the place that he's talking about? I, I went and I did some research. I said, okay, hold on. Let me check out Jewish populations by cities. The biggest Jewish populated cities. Umam has to be on here. And would you believe that Umam is not on here? Don't expect it to be at the top. I'm pretty sure Israel or New York is at the top. So Jerusalem and New York are at the top. But as you see, as we go down the list, I don't see Umam, I see Odessa, I see Kharkiv. I do not see Umam. Now, there are other cities in the Ukraine that that want that have Jews in them. Like I said, uh, Kiev, Kharkiv. They have Jews, they have large Jewish populations. But it's very interesting that, that Umam is supposed to be the place, and it's very interesting that the Muslim guy said, he's trying to send all the people to Ukraine. Could this be true? Zelensky is a Jewish leader of Ukraine, so he's, you know, there's a Jewish man who is there. He's a pro-Zionist. Uh, Russia doesn't have an issue with, 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 with Israel. Could they be also saying, yeah, when we get rid of, when we empty out Ukraine, you guys can pop one in. 
Is it possible that what the rabbi, what, what the Muslim brother said is true? That the America is done with the Zionist experiment. Other nations have decided to say, forget the Zionist experiment. It's not working. We're moving on. And the Zionists know it too. And they're going, what they plan on doing, is they, plan on, uh, they plan on allowing these attacks to happen more and more to the people over there because they have plans to leave you all there. 2012, 10 years ago, Page six, this is New York Post, page six, New York Post. Look at the headline, No More Israel. Right. From September 2012, Henry Kissinger says in 10 years, when would that be? 2022. Right. There would be no more Israel. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So uh, the actual quote from that article on page six in the Times said this. Henry Kissinger, former Secretary of State, current savant of the state of the world. Do not argue with Mr. Mr. Kissinger's know-how. He already knows how. Middle East horror. Democratic Party dissing Jerusalem. D.C.'s anti-Israel mentality. Obama busy raising re-election funds. No time for beleaguered Netanyahu. The Oval Office attitude versus the red line. Iran's oath to destroy our only friend in that part of the world. Reported to me, Henry Kissinger has stated, and I quote the statement word for word, in 10 years, there will be no more Israel. I repeat, in 10 years, there will be no more Israel. What we're showing you here today is that there are some very important people and very wealthy people who are openly talking about relocating the Zionist state from Palestine to Ukraine. This is from Eurasia Review, August 28, 2012. So what is all the fuss about? It's a paper entitled Preparing for a Post-Israel Middle East, an 82-page analysis that concludes that the American national interest in fundamentally is fundamentally at odds with that of Zionist Israel. The author concludes uh, that Israel is currently the greatest threat to U.S. national interest because its nature and actions prevent normal U.S. relations with Arab and Muslim countries and to a growing degree, the wider international community. So it goes on to say that this study was commissioned by the U.S. intelligence community comprising of 16 American intelligence agencies with an annual budget in excess of $70 billion. The IC, or intelligence community, includes the departments of Navy, Army, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, Defense Intelligence Agency, Departments of Energy, Homeland Security, State, Treasury, Drug Enforcement Agency, Federal Bureau of Investigation, um, uh, and so many others. And so yeah, uh, the National, uh, Geos uh, National Security Agency, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the National Reconnaissance Agency, and the Central Intelligence Agency all were partners in commissioning the study. Israel, given its current uh, brutal occupation and belligerence, cannot be salvaged any more than apartheid South Africa could be when as late as 1987, Israel was the only Western nation that upheld diplomatic ties with South Africa and was the last country to join the international boycott campaign before the regime collapsed. So the intelligence community was saying, was admitting that Israel was, was a brutal, brutal occupier and that basically there was no hope for and the that, future of Israel. And that is apartheid. Right. So Israel leadership, with its increasing support of the 700,000 illegal settlers on the occupied West Bank, is increasingly out of touch with the political, military, and economic realities of the Middle East. The post-labor government Likud coalition is deeply complicit with and influenced by the settlers' political and financial power and will increasingly face domestic civil strife, which the U.S. government should not associate itself with or become involved with. So it goes on to say the Arab Spring and Islamic Awakening has to a major degree freed a large majority of the 1.2 billion Arab and Muslims to pursue what an overwhelming majority believe is the illegitimate, immoral and unsustainable European occupation of Palestine of the indigenous population. And simultaneous with but predating rapidly expanding Arab and Muslim power in the region as evidenced by the Arab Spring Islamic awakening and the ascendancy of Iran, and American power and influence recedes, the U.S. commitment to belligerent, oppressive Israel is becoming impossible to defend or execute consistent given 
paramount U.S. national interests, which include normalizing relations with the 57 Islamic countries. Gross Israeli interference in the internal affairs of the United States through spying and illegal U.S. arms transfers. This includes supporting more than 60 front organizations and approximately 7,500 U.S. officials who do Israel's bidding and seek to dominate and intimidate the media and agencies of the U.S. government, which should no longer be condoned. The United States government no longer has the financial resources or public support to continue funding Israel. The more than $3 trillion in direct and indirect aid from U.S. taxpayers to Israel since 1967, remember this is 2012, is not affordable and is increasingly being off, objected to by U.S. taxpayers who oppose continuing American military involvement in the Middle East. U.S. public opinion no longer supports funding and executing widely perceived illegal U.S. wars on Israel's behalf. The view is increasingly being shared by Europe, Asia, and the international public, uh, and also by the next generation. The next generation of voters have, don't care about supporting Israel. So Israel's segregationist uh, occupation infrastructure evidenced by legalized discrimination and increasingly separate and unequal justice systems must no longer be directly or indirectly funded by the U.S. taxpayers or ignored by the U.S. government. It goes on to say, Israel has failed as a claimed democratic state and continued American financial and political cover will not change its continuing devolution as an international pariah state. Translated, it doesn't matter how much money or how much military aid we get, uh, give to Israel, Israel is always going to be uh, a pariah state to many in the UN. Uh, increasingly rampant and violent racism exhibited among Jewish settlers in the West Bank is being condoned by the Israeli government to a degree that the Israel government has become its protector and partner. You cannot deny that. That's been the case. The expanding chasm among American Jews objecting to Zionism and, its, and Israeli practices, including the killing and brutalizing of Palestinians under Israeli occupation, are gross violations of American and international law and raise questions within the U.S. Jewish community regarding the American responsibility to protect innocent civilians under occupation. The international opposition to the increasingly apartheid regime can no longer be synchronized with American claimed humanitarian values or U.S. expectations in its bilateral relations with the 193-member United Nations. All right, so, Doc, you found, uh, you found this next guy, and uh, this is a new one to me. This okay. man is uh, a billionaire in Ukraine, the founder of Great Ukraine Political Party, kind of like the MAGA, uh, <laughs> Make Ukraine Great Again. Uh, his name is Igor Berkut. Yes. And so this particular article from Mikola Lacante uh, asked the question, who is Berkut and who is his brother? Reflections on the New Jerusalem Project. Now, his project is to establish the New Jerusalem in where else? Ukraine. He says an epical event at the beginning of 2017, which the world media did not even mention in passing, was the landing of the first group of immigrants from Israel headed by Igor Bakut in the port of Odessa. This group of 183 Jewish pioneers arrived in Ukraine from Haifa in order to lay the first stone in the foundation of heavenly Jerusalem on the fertile land of southern Ukraine. So on the first day of the coming year of the Red Rooster, that was 2017, the portal told the world. And so uh, this is uh, from a speech from Igor Bakut himself the executive director of the project to create the main center of world Jewry in the territory of five southern Ukrainian regions, it became known that New Jerusalem by 2027, it will become a hotbed of prosperity for Jewish settlers built on the technologies of the seventh economic order. According to Igor Bakut, who is revered by many in Israel as Mashiach ben Yosef, the money and decisive breakthrough technologies for the heavenly Jerusalem will be given by the largest banking houses and global multinational corporations, most of which are owned by Jews. Is, uh, people are calling him the Messiah? Messiah? Yes. The Heavenly Jerusalem Project is a practical response, now listen to this, to the predictions of the well-informed political heavyweight Henry Kissinger and the late Palestinian prophet Sheikh Yassin 
that by 2022 to 2025, the residence of Jews in the current territory of Israel would become impossible due to the aggressiveness of the surrounding Muslim population, natural anomalies, and the future cataclysm battle of the end. We're going to see a, uh, a movement that will culminate in 2025 of the relocation of Jews from the state of Israel in Palestine to Ukraine. Right. And Israel will move. There will be a big Israel. Are we going to see a little Israel, a big Israel? Or will Israel become the current, what they call the state of Israel? Notice it's not a nation of Israel. It's a state of Israel. Because it was created by the United Nations. Right. So it's a state of Israel. Uh, Maybe it becomes something else. Maybe it becomes a negotiated holy land for all three uh, major faiths. Well, uh, if you really dig down into some of the aspects of Berkut's philosophy, he's saying that there is a, a partnership actually going on behind the scenes with Russia to make this happen. Uh, with Russia and other, uh, and, and with leading Jews from around the world. Now, one more quote from that particular article. It says, an advanced group of Jewish settlers led by non-Jew, Igor Bakut, began preparing the infrastructure to receive the first 100,000 Israelis. Their arrival and resettlement in the territory of New Jerusalem and Odessa, and I'm, I'm going to uh, yes, butcher Odessa. these names, uh, is expected until mid-2018. In total, by the end of 2022, 6 million Jews from Israel and more than 12 million from Russia, the United States, and European Union are expected to arrive in the new homeland. So there are 6 million people that have left Ukraine in the past uh, two months here. They have vacated Ukraine. 6 million. Okay. Now, it is interesting that. And is Putin, as I brought this up last week, will Putin be required that Russia will have to pay war reparations? in the billions, trillions of dollars to rebuild Ukraine. Well, and now I'm beginning to think maybe that was all planned in the first place. Maybe the whole idea was not only to get Russia to destroy Ukraine, but also to pay for Ukraine. And the way the Americans do it. Yeah. So the reason they started this war was to empty out Ukraine. And haven't they done that, Rick? What if you're elite? Israelis have full plans to leave all of the other Israeli people, the middle class, the poor Israelis. They're going to leave you there and let you get bombed by Muslims. Well, they're just going to leave you there and let you get taken over by Muslims. And they're going to leave and go over into the Ukraine. I'm assuming that if all of you all die in Israel, if all of you all suffer some kind of bad fate in Israel because of this, don't just call it a sacrifice. They may even call it, dare I say, a Holocaust. All right, you guys, leave some messages in the comment section. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think, mm, this is stupid. Uh, what you just said is dumb. None of this makes sense. You and the Muslim guy, BB, are stupid as hell. This will never happen. Israel is under attack by radical Hamas Muslims and they need to suffer because they're trying to kill Jews and this sucks. Okay, well, I mean, it's possible. I ask you this though, did you know about Imam? Because I didn't know about Imam. Did you know about this place? Did you know that there was this pilgrimage happening there all the time where Jewish people are going there? Did you know this? Is it possible that maybe this is a new place? They're not talking about it. It's not being talked about at all. It could it be that this is the new place? I don't know. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys leave some comments in the comment section. Tell me what do you think, and I will see you in the next one. Hmm. So something really to think about here. What what is going on? So we're not gonna do anything. We're just gonna wait and see what happens. And if this does happen, I'm curious to know. Hey, Jewish people, what about that nation state in Jerusalem? If Israel, the Israel elite, moved to Imam. What does that mean about those Bible stories? Hmm. Guess you're gonna have some explaining to do. It'd be interesting to hear what your ex- explanations are. Well, I'll see you guys in the next one. And this is something you definitely needed to know. Random radio. Yeah, boy. Yeah.